Hello again, this is UML Operator. Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're gonna be actually kicking off a series on Model Driven Anything. And the first video is actually kind of a high level view of what we're gonna be talking about and touching on over the next month or so in this series. The first video in this series is on approaching API architecture. In particular, we're gonna be starting out with RESTful APIs and then eventually going to another architecture style around microservices. We'll also be covering enterprise versus solution versus application architects, what the difference is, engineers versus architects, and the roles and responsibilities of stakeholders, uh, frameworks and their use, scripting automation and the basics to help you deliver faster, how to reuse assets, and we're gonna be covering a lot more. But let's get to the subject matter in this particular episode. So today we're gonna to be talking about, or defining, I should say, the difference between model-driven development and model-driven architecture. So I posted a blog article today on MDD versus MDA, model-driven architecture versus model-driven development. And essentially MDA is a standardized framework-based approach that was proposed by OMG, the Open Model Group, focusing on model transformation across different levels of abstraction using specific standards and frameworks, or I should say specific standards and tools. On the other hand, model-driven development is a broader, more flexible approach that emphasizes the use of models throughout the development process without being tied to a specific standard or framework. By understanding these differences, companies, development shops, organizations, etc., can better choose the approach that aligns with their project requirements, goals, and existing workflows and architecture. All right, we're gonna start off by creating a new project. I'm in a blank Sparks effort. We're going to choose this folder to name our project. We're going to name our project Arco, which is our fictitious company, Knowledge Management System API Project, KMS, right? We're going to hit save and it is going to start. And now we've got a blank project here. We don't need the start page anymore. We'll go ahead and close that, right? So we have nothing in here and we're going to start creating some packages or namespaces next. Actually, before we do that, we have our blank project. There is nothing in it. There are no resources, no patterns, no, none of our document templates, none of our reference data. This is completely blank. So the first thing we actually want to do, and you can do this afterwards, but it's kind of good to do it first. Let's log into our reusable asset service. And if you don't have RAS deployed or Sparks Cloud, I show how to do that in previous videos, you can bring in your reference XML file uh, right from any file share. But let's go ahead, we're logged in. We're gonna go to reference data is our storage area. And let's just grab the latest reference data for our projects. We're gonna go ahead and hit import. It already has selected everything that we wanna bring in. So we're gonna select import. It's going out to RAS SQL Server and it's bringing this reference data in to start our project. All right, it is done. We're gonna hit okay. There we go. We can go ahead and close RAS now. And now we have our patterns. We have our uh, document templates. Here's our custom templates, solution, all reports and all of that. We go to settings. We have our UML types, including our tag values that we've added, we've customized and a lot more. We have got images and everything that we need to start any project. Now in our root folder here called model, we can change the name, but we're not gonna, we don't need to do that. We're gonna create a level one package and we're gonna call it our co KMS API project, same name as the Sparks project. And uh, we're just gonna do package only. You could put a diagram in here if you want to, or you can add that later on. Then from here, we're gonna start putting in our packages. Now 
Now under project management, we're gonna create our cover sheet to show you how to do this in other videos. And in this series, we'll show you how to do this from scratch, right? We're going to start developing our requirements. And in this particular case, we've already developed the requirements, the business requirements, the technical requirements, the non-technical or non-functional requirements, your performance requirements. So we've built that out. So in the cover page for requirements, we're just going to bring in uh, requirements management as a blank navigation cell. And now we've got our requirements, all software delivery, any development exercise that you do, even during your learning and training should have requirements. In other words, what you hope to accomplish. We're gonna to go to our technical requirements. We're gonna right click on this or we can hit control zero. We're going to use specification manager. So it's essentially opening up all the requirements. You can see most of them are blank. They just have a high level title, if you will, using the numbering convention that we put in auto naming and numbering. And so here what we're doing is we're looking for the nouns and verbs nouns being our actors and our data, and verbs being our functions. So we're gonna use these to start doing solution approach and design. Let's go ahead and close Specification Manager for this demonstration. We'll get more into that later. Let's focus on the design folder, right? So in this particular case, we're going to need to, and I'm gonna use package only, we're going to need to design our database. Data first is what I always say, and however you want to spell database, all right? So the first thing is our design around our data architecture or database. The next thing is our deployment view, right? We want to get our deployment view as we're working from the bottom up data. And if you want to work from the top down, let's go ahead and add the top down. Let's add web or UI, UX, user experience, add that in there, right? Then eventually what we're getting into is software, all right? So deployment, systems, the code, software, the web, your user experience, and everything is being built around data, especially when you're using service-oriented architecture styles whether they're RESTful APIs or microservices. I usually start database design, database understanding, data understanding as soon as possible, right? In this particular case, we've already brought it in for this demonstration. Let's go to develop, we go to database builder. We have our knowledge management database. We have one table so far based on our requirements that we're focused on. The nouns that we looked at helped us build out the data schema, if you will, from that. And we can use Scratchpad to test our database. So let's just, very simple, uh, from articles is the name of the table. Let's go ahead and run it. So we've got some seed data in there, five rows. That's already in there. So we have our data so far, and we can, as we're working through requirements, development, elicitation, we can continue to work in Sparks on defining our tables and our fields or columns, depending on the technology you're using as we go forward. Now in existing architecture, the data tables might already be defined and you reverse engineering them. In a new project around delivery, uh, you may be doing this from scratch. So it's very important that you get the field names and size and shape types, those kind of things done as soon as possible because you're gonna be doing a lot of changes and you wanna do that before you get into actual coding. Now, speaking of technology, as and we're gonna talk about deployment and technology component views and so on, but in this particular case, we chose the database technology, Microsoft SQL Server, All right? So, in Sparks, they go up to 2012. This works just fine in the current version of SQL Studio. So very important you define your technology. I could always change. You come in here and go, well, we don't want to use Microsoft SQL Server. We want to use MariaDB. We want to use MySQL. We want to use SQLite, Oracle, Postgres. 
you could change at any particular time. And then you can generate your DDLs from that uh, at any time to develop in the other data technology that you choose. But in this particular case, we chose um, SQL Server, as you can see right here. Our schema already uh, implemented, so we could go off right now and create this data table. We just have one very simple table in here. We could create that as we're going through uh, project delivery and testing. Let's go ahead and close this. It and close tables. Uh, we'll bring in those navigation cells into our main folder in just a moment. But the next thing is your deployment view. So in understanding the technologies, you know, we just talked about the SQL database of so the technology we've chosen here, but we know that the objective here is to develop a RESTful API. And the architecture in this case that we're going to be aiming for is from a presentation layer down to the web server to the actual application server and services that are running within this very simple architecture that's doing the data abstraction out of the SQL server. So understanding the technology that you're gonna be using, whether it's you're starting out in a local development environment or you're starting out in Azure Cloud or some other server topology, server environment, uh, understand that is very important before you even start doing software design. Now, I know I'm covering this very quickly, and it as we go through this series, we're actually gonna be doing this slower and, and defining what we're doing from scratch as we're going through a software delivery exercise. And in this case, it's a very simple project, uh, one sprint probably to do the whole thing, and we're, we're uh, done and delivered. But before you get into code design, make sure you understand your requirements, have a solution approach solving the problems, which is gonna help you start defining your data technology and how things are going to be laid out there, as well as your deployment architecture, dev stage production that you're gonna be releasing to. The next thing we're gonna get into is software design. And when we're starting out in software design, we know that we're going to have a separation of concerns. We're gonna have web architecture. We're going to have an application server, APIs, and we're gonna have models that are supporting our uh, RESTful APIs in this case, and eventually microservices as we further go into this series. So we don't wait till the very end to try to start understanding Right now, web is blank. We get into APIs. We're gonna start with either the models and we're gonna start defining what those models may look like. And this is this is pseudocode, right? We're just defining this in Sparks. You know, if I go here and I go to features, everything that you've learned, we've learned how to build out operations, attributes, draw relevance to um, other class elements, whether they're interfaces or just regular class elements or objects as we're going through. And then we can start as we're defining these, we'll go ahead and open this up and then go here to details, go into advance and tags. We can start defining that as we're going forward. Let's go into operations here. It brings up this features table and you've seen this in other uh, videos and we'll, again we're going to go this through this in more detail. We've looked at the nouns and the verbs in the business requirements. We've started to build out the technical requirements, and we understand that we need the ability to do CRUD operations, create, read, update, delete. Uh, we want to do search, and we're able to go in and start defining these elements so that we can better understand those as we're delivering our software exercise. Now we still have not gone over to our integrated development environment or whatever tool that we're going to be using. Um, let me put this back over here. I like to park it in the lower right and get back to properties. But we want to start stubbing out our code so that we understand our interfaces, our services, our APIs, our controllers. We start understanding these. 
so that when we go to generate the code, and I've shown you this in the other videos, we'll do this in slower and more detail. We're able to actually write comments, uh, do versioning, do collaboration. As we're building out our design, our pseudocode, that's gonna be taken over to our development team where they'll start developing or refactoring the code. Then as we start working with our development team, our code, our pseudocode, goes from looking like this to looking like this, right? So this is real working code in a real working platform, which we can then demonstrate to our client stakeholders as we're delivering. So now our code from our model elements, the code behind is actually connected to our real working repository where we are able to start, run, and demo our solution. From the JavaScript object notation response object from the RESTful API to the presentation layer and the experience that the users are going to see when they're invoking those services. For your clients, you're able to show how the uh, experience is going to work on a tablet, on a browser, or even on a mobile device. So this is how we do model-driven development in order to very quickly accomplish demonstration and delivery for our project stakeholders. I hope this video was helpful for you. We're gonna have a lot of fun in this series as we're going through. We're gonna dive deeper, go a little slower, to show how we're doing this in delivering software using model-driven architecture and model-driven development. Watched a lot of groups that I've been working with over the past year or more uh, since I retired from my other company. And it's just very exciting to watch the others progress in model-driven architecture and model-driven design, model-driven development. So we're gonna cover a lot more and look forward to seeing you there. And until then, happy modeling.